you've got a pipe plugged right into you. There is an energy, a non-physical energy, that streams forth into everything that you know here in your physical environment. Pure, positive energy. You may call it God force or life force, creative life force. It is energy. It is the energy that created your planet to begin with, and now it is the energy that sustains it. It's the energy that keeps your Earth spinning in its orbit in perfect proximity to other planets. It is the same energy that keeps the perfect water content on your planet. It is the same energy that keeps the perfect, perfect atmosphere for you to, to breathe. It is the perfect energy that allows the life force in the seed so that the little tomato seed has within it the adult tomato plant and the ability to produce more plants and more seeds. In other words, this pure positive energy streams forth into everything. The rocks receive it fully. The beasts receive it fully. The plants receive it fully. It is only physical man who sometimes does not allow himself to receive it fully because he has learned to focus lack. So, this pure positive energy streams forth into you at all times. You can't see it, but you can feel it. You can't hear it, but you can feel it. When you are feeling elation or appreciation, when you are feeling love or peace, those things that you call positive emotions are indicators that you have stepped within the stream. When you feel anger or fear or disappointment or loneliness or guilt, those emotions are indicators that you've stepped out of it. When you step within the stream, you are vital and alive. When you step out of the stream, you are tired and lethargic. You don't even want to get out of bed. When you are within the stream, you are clear, even inspired. When you are outside of the stream, you are confused. You bump into things. You see what we are getting at? So as you realize that the stream is always there and you are always connected to it, we use the terminology connected or disconnected, but both of those are too strong of words because you can't be disconnected. When you are, they'll pronounce you dead. But then you would be fully connected because you would reemerge totally into the pure non-physical energy. And so a good way to look at it is that you're always plugged into it and, and you may have like a tiny little garden hose feeding you in which case you can get by, not very joyfully, not very helpfully, but you can sort of muck on. Or you can begin to appreciate, to begin to look for positive aspects, begin to look for reasons to feel good, and open that hose wider and wider and wider. And as you start paying attention to how energy is flowing through you, you begin to notice that you have control of how much and where you, what you flood it toward. Uh, deliberate creation is a bit like target shooting. Analogies are never perfect, and this one is not, but you will get the idea of what we are talking about. To be an effective target shooter, two things are required. You need a target in your sights and bullets in your gun. When you are connected to your pure non-physical energy, you have bullets in your gun. So if you are choosing something lackful, as you choose a target that is not in harmony with your greater intent from non-physical perspective, you have no bullets because your non-physical energy will not stream forth lackfully. So one takes care of the other, doesn't it? As you begin to choose targets of appreciation, as you begin to look for reasons to feel good, as you begin to talk more about what you do want and less about what you don't want, you begin to feel more of this energy flowing. Oh, friends, let us give you a sort of picture of this. It doesn't take much tipping of the balance of the scales in order to make a dramatic difference in your physical life experience. If 51% of the time you're talking about what you want and why you want it, and only 49% of the time you're talking about what you don't want or noticing that what you do want isn't there yet, your scale is tipped enough that you're beginning to move toward what you want. You're inching along. Usually it's not fast enough for you and you get discouraged and you keep noticing it's not there, so you tip it back the other way so that most of you hold yourself pretty much in a stationary position so not much really good happens and not much really bad happens if you could just sixty percent of the time talk about what you do want and why you want it and only forty percent of the time notice that it isn't happening yet you would be making so much progress that you would really be noticing it you would start feeling encouraged and you would start saying i'm going to flow even more energy until you're an energy flowing fiend <laughs> if you get it up around seventy five percent of the time where seventy five percent of the time you're talking about what you want and why you want it and only twenty five percent of the time you're noticing that it isn't happening or complaining about what is 
Your life is going so well that everybody around you is saying, what are you doing? What have you discovered? You do not have to be perfect in it. And you never will be because you live in a universe of contrast where you will always be receiving influence or stimulation or awareness of that which is not wanted. But that is not a bad thing. It is a clarifying thing. You would not, as a magnificent sculptor, take a big clump of clay and splat it forward and say, it didn't turn out very good. <laughs> Instead, you would throw it down there and you would work with it. You would mold it. You would define it. You would practice. You would learn what looked good to you and you would learn what did not, you see. And yet as physical creators, as flowers of energy, you often want to just throw it out there and then complain rather than mold it and have fun with it and fine-tune it and, and change, maybe even make new decisions, maybe even discard some old ideas and pick up some new ones. You see what we are getting at? Good.